And away we go. 49 days to Spain. That's the perfect number. Seven days of seven weeks. Seven weeks, seven, seven. So over the weekend, uh, food was made and we can keep it in order to recover, recover well, so food can be carried out in the most optimal fashion if we have enough energy to work it through. But you have to take care, reload, sensibly, slowly. And then you can take it back now again, which is what we can do. Um, the central nervous system is particularly efficient at keeping the body alive, so it's slowing down. If you're overtaxing it or overtaxed it, any <coughs> level, lack of nutrition, too much stress, no sleep. Um, but it recovers just as quickly as well. You really can train the central nervous system to get to your optimal output, which I think we've just about all right. Yeah. You know, look, it's a, it's a given thing. You get to a point where the body is tired, you need to recognize that, to rest that, and go accordingly. This is where it gets tough. So, what we did. We had a diet going, say, eight to ten weeks, Western province. We didn't peak for the show, we just put straight through it. There's no point in peaking for that one, and then three weeks later you need to peak again. When it starts to recognize what you're doing, so it doesn't respond well. <coughs> so, we didn't peak for the first one. We went straight through with good positioning, but no peaking, no water dropping, no sodium, no that. None of that. We went through to SS, which is another three weeks later, now 13 weeks. Let's say if you take, you did not, I think we did it 16 weeks, I haven't done it. Up to Western Province, up to, up to SS. And now from SS, during that 16 weeks, we repeat at SS. Now we have another seven weeks before we compete again. And this is where it gets back to. Most people don't understand that you can't, you can't give everything that's in the tank, especially if you know where you're going. So you have to keep some in reserve. You have to be on point, obviously, good enough so you can make the team. But they need something to be in the tank because now the work actually starts. So you can't run yourself into the ground to get to the SX you get qualified to go to Worlds, but there's nothing left. Then it gets tricky, you get sick, the immune system is down, because there's, there's no immune left if you're diving too long, and you haven't taken care of while diving. And then uh, the body stops responding. No matter how little food you eat, how much cardio you do, as a matter of fact, the more you do, the more you destroy, the less of response. So there's a given thing. When we came off of SAS, we gave our bodies a week. A little cardio, more food, not so intense training. Just getting back to shore. Thanking the body, rewarding the body, and asking the body, like, you're going to do another push for seven weeks. This is for you, and then we're going to go again. So enjoy the off, enjoy the food. So one of the most recognizable characteristics of that space is exhaustion or tiredness, not only having so, uh, so anything slightly taxing, body keeps you out to tired, just run out the way if you, you are literally tired. Take note of those spaces, listen to those spaces, it's sometimes really hard because we're going to go, go, go. 
snow down, put it back, reel it in a little bit to play with it. It's like fishing. As you reel it, as you throw it out, you toss it out, you know, put it in, put it in, play with it. And then you're ready for the butter. You have built up enough strength over many, many, many months to know that you can go full out having full energy. You don't have enough fuel to service a particular session, training session, a whole session is diminished in terms of quality. Lift it, load it, drive it. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really wake space that you need to find yourself in. You are in tune with your body. It becomes more than just it's your body and vibration. It becomes your best friend, your vessel, and you have to listen to your vessel because there comes a point where you might think the damn, your body's gonna tell you I can't. You need to find common ground between that. Okay, I understand. I can't go here, but let's go to here. So you and your body start working together, all completely against one another. Yeah, you literally coax yourself into a space of optimal performance. So there's, there's layers of this optimal performance. If you want to reach your um, pinnacle, you want to roll back down. You, there are no rules. There's no set past this is where we are, this is how we are doing in terms of nutrition. Because you're dealing with the emotional uh, vessel. Container carries your stress, your joy, your hard work, and your rest. And you somehow have to mold that. You really need to pay attention to the message that's coming out of the body. And sometimes that can change from meal to meal. So, for instance, you decide to have no breakfast, no breakfast, you get up, just don't have the capacity to do 15 or 16 hours of that, change the concept for that day and be okay with it. Stop stressing that space. And then you can't actually do it and you try and do it. So it's always if you want to say lunch, you want to say thank you, I appreciate the message, I'll pay attention to this, and I'll, I'll help you switch you out. If you don't, the body will take you deeper into that space of non performance. So eventually, if you don't listen to your body, the body tends to either shut down, so you just no response, you get sick, and you get response, so your system wants to stop, so it shuts itself down, so you can't play anymore, you become sick. Or you have uh, burnout, central nervous system fatigue, you start getting fat, even if you're on a low calorie diet or a deficit. It's not responding, it doesn't want to respond. It's not happy, so it's not going to respond. So you have to pay particular attention. Keep your body happy and healthy while doing this. If you want optimal results, like I said, it's not, you can't just expect your, your body, your vessel, to just perform, 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 and you're doing nothing from your side. You assist in that performance. You help. Aid to to give fuel. So sometimes many people think you have to kill yourself, you have to be exhausted. Now you get to a point where a bench, I failed in this set, but I have 90 sets left. How productive is the 90 sets that's following? Is it even worth doing that? Because if you couldn't manage this set, why bother doing the rest? You're not going to get something out of it. And there's a point where you're now just pulling, tugging, and inflaming ligaments and tendons. Because the muscle doesn't want to respond. There's too little nitrogen in the muscle to respond. So it's ligaments and tendons all the way. 
and then you get these nagging my elbows are sore, my shoulder is sore because the proper muscles is not doing the work the tendons, is, the tendons and ligaments are doing it by themselves in essence because the muscles are too tired they don't want to they're trying to reserve the stored glycogen and for energy they have and that's the space you want to avoid at all costs so there are particular pointers, like I said, one of them would be exhaustion or tiredness or that heavy leg, leg feeling when you start to climb stairs or get out of bed or something like that. One of the others is um, the management skills that you are talking about is motivation within the training or to get to the training. If you batter yourself a lot and come on, let's do this one more, I've got to drive. Take note again. There's too much central nervous energy being pumped into something that should be fairly regular. And the kickback is going to be like you would say severe. So you don't necessarily have to stop right there then turn it down. Just to be a fact, the perception of the body that you are listening, you are helping to take care of. You are saying, okay, you know what, this is too much. You're not going to drive it all the way into whatever injury you're creating. You're going to back off a little bit. There's still a little bit more feed, a little bit more nutrition. You support the system a little bit more. It. It's so key to help you, but you need to help it too. So, yeah, so when I. Better know higher note, nicer note. In uh, what is it, seven weeks, yeah, seven weeks, we are going to Barcelona, Santa Susana, World Championships. Kate will be doing women's physique, master's category. It'll be the first time she actually competes against her own age. Up until now, it's been youngsters, and when I mean youngsters, Kate is 56. And I think the closest competitor to her on stage is about 30 years younger. And that's like that most of the time. So this will be the first time she's actually going to stand in a category where everybody's the same age as her, and masters. Um, so I'm quite excited for that and looking forward to that. I will be doing classic bodybuilding. So I need to keep my weight quite low. I think the, uh, the cutoff weight for my length is 91 kilograms, so if I'm more than 91 kilograms, I'm disqualified. So it will to make it quite difficult because I'm at a 2 kilogram drop. And so that's the classic bodybuilding is my weight, my length, is capped at 93. But as soon as you go to worlds, they drop that even lower. So the standard becomes much higher. So if you were that you're a nationalist and you barely made weight, chances are you're going to not make weight at all because it's another two kilograms down. So it is quite difficult and there's a sort of pre upfront elimination protocol like that. An extra two kilograms, so if you can't, if you were struggling now, don't even bother. Currently I'm sitting at about 95, 96, so I'm not too worried about that got seven weeks and it's not that I'm needing to lose four kilograms of fat. I'm just completely loaded down. We have nice food, lots of food, the body is nice and filled out. And as soon as you start depleting again all that weight just diminishes. So not to worry about the weight gap. And then we are entering together the big spares couple which is quite exciting. It's the first time we get the opportunity to do this in the world stage. We've been the running champions in South Africa for the last four years. And now it's time to go outside and show the world, <coughs> compete against the other couples across the country, across the world. So that's quite exciting. There's a lot to look forward to. It's a an abundance of information that's waiting for us out there to see other competitors, how they do stuff, how they warm up, how they eat, what they eat. 
what flip rose says. So in essence, when you do something like this, there's like this excessive stream of information, if you're open to it. To see what other athletes do, what other coaches do. So there's so much knowledge and so much information that's been passed about in a world setting like that. And to see other competitors do, how they pose, what's their routines like, what's their philosophies, how they carry themselves. It's an incredible experience. And I, I, I really, I wish it for anyone. Because it just, it jumps your career, your, your sport, your knowledge, it just leaps and bounds. Because it's not a small little network that you used to. People can tell you, because they're friends and family, you look great. And yeah, that's, that's cool and it's nice. But now you step on stage with many other competitors and they're also very nice and very good. And then you get a clear look at where you find yourself amongst the best. So my people are just telling me rainbow stories because they didn't want to hurt my feelings. Or can I actually hang with the best in the world? So that's always an awakening and an awesome challenge. Because as a competitor, as a warrior, you want to compete against the best and call yourself the best that you were. You don't want to stand on the stage and not have any competitor and walk away with the win. That's not winning. That's a fucking cruise price. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you for participating. And you shouldn't take that as a win. You need to battle. No war was done by one side. It's people battling each other, top spot. And I want to be on stage with the best. So I can measure myself, my training methods, my style, my quality, my package I bring to the stage against the best in the world. To truly know where you, where you are. Are you on top of your craft? Are you doing everything you can? Is it working? Is it responding? Are you competitive? That's the main that's the main thing. So that's exciting to go see. You go battle it out against real warriors from other countries, the top of their the discipline in each category. So that, that's always something to look forward to. It's someone that in classic let's let's go to classic volleyball. The guys I'm gonna face from around the world, each one of those that qualified that's in that is gonna be in that lineup. They are the best from their country. People that take it very seriously in that specific discipline. And I'm going to face all those guys. I take what I do very seriously. They do. And now we're going to clash to see who took it most serious. And that's always a good thing. So who's the most hungry? Yeah. It's such a wholesome space. It's opportunities very far in between where the wholesomeness of each training um, history, the historic training of that athlete that comes to stage is laid bare. You're exposed to the entire complete scene and such a wonderful opportunity to be able to go and compete. You know what the level is not perfect for that or that or that. Um, knowing that, that your, your homework has been done, and part of the homework has been discussing is routine, literally priming the body for the best space that it can be in order to deliver a delivery excuse stress. So learning to control stress smooth the package out takes months of practice in terms of breathing mechanisms, nutritional recovery and easing out of the system. You can't just do that in the last seven weeks. These seven weeks are the cherry on top of the last four, five, six years. Well, look, we started this process just this diet for this show, 
February, March. So we've been busy for a while. But other than that, Cape has been doing this for eight years to try and get the string of colors to become a national athlete. So this is eight years of walking the journey. On and off, on and off, in season, off season, in season, off season. And I've been doing this for 15. So this is year 15. And you learn a lot over that time. A lot, especially if you compete a lot. We do, we do a lot of shows, especially when we started. I need to get to mature fast and to get used to the grind. And when you compete, you get a different body. Going that deep, going that depleted, your body changes faster. So the more you can compete when you come in as a competitor, the better. Don't do one show and then take off season and do a show. It, it takes too long. People are too hung up about size. I'm losing size, I'm going to get small. Get small and then get big. You don't just get small and stay small, it's bodybuilding. So getting small is part of it, and getting big is part of it. You're not always going to be big, and you're not always going to be small. So um, to give you a little rundown of what's currently going on, we are now going to do, we we'll start off in seven weeks, with about 35, 40 minutes of cardio in the morning. Slow, non-taxing. We need to do an hour on the stepper. That's out. It's killing the legs too much. The fries the central nervous system. So, and when your legs is tired, there's very little recovery time because you're on them all the time. We work 14, 16 hour shifts. We have our own personal training studio, so we can see clients. And the first clients walk through the door at 5 o'clock, 5 a.m. So we do cardio, 3.30 to 4.30, we have half an hour. We shower and eat and clean up and look good and smell good. Five o'clock, the first client walks in. And the first break we get is about 10. And at 10 we do our weight training. So it's about six hours for cardio. Six hours, two meals, weight training. 12 o'clock, so 10 and 12, that's a two hour gap. You have to train, eat, shower, look good, smell good. 12 o'clock second set of clients walk in. And we see clients all the way up to five, six, and then we go home. And then it's posing, it's making tomorrow's food, it's prepping everything that needs to be done for tomorrow, so we can just come to work and do the same. You have to get your shit together. It's not, you can't say, yeah, I didn't know, or uh, you knew. You know exactly how your shit's going to run. So you need to prepare for that, especially if you want to you get somewhere, you want to achieve goals. Because if you look at the reasons why you can't do it, there's always going to be reasons for you not to do it. And there's always going to be reasons for you to do it. It's what you're focusing on. So focus on why and yes, and it should be done, and I can do this. Then all the reasons why you can't or it's going to be in the way or you don't have enough time. We all have 24 hours. Only 24. And one way we found was coming in earlier, sacrificing some sleep, getting it done. You feel much better because you did your work, it's done. So you have that, that calmness and confidence. The first part of your day was successful. I did my cardio, achieved my first goal. Now I need to focus on getting in a meal, getting in another meal, get my head straight with the second session, my weight training session is coming up in six hours. And you can mentally prepare for that, get yourself in a good space. You have an awesome workout. I can't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is for me, it's, it's too far. I got too much shit going on before now and tomorrow. So for me, it's simply to get through the day as good as possible. Making sure my meals is on point. I'm happy and good with the clients. It's a positive vibe. Because it's not just about me. As much as I'm going somewhere, the person I'm teaching, the person I'm training, they're also going somewhere. They also have goals. It's not mine. 
It's theirs, and there is no difference. It's as important to him as much as it's important to me. For him to lose, for her to lose that 30 kilograms, is like for me to go to Spain. So you need to respect the smallest to the biggest ones, because <clears throat> you don't know. It's not yours. You don't understand the value. You don't understand the, the change that will bring. Maybe the confidence or the improvement for that person. Um, what else? So you need to grasp the concept of linking a pathway to branching out to everybody else's pathways. It's critical that everybody comes along on the journey. Somebody needs to up front and clear some of the foliage and then the others can follow. But that doesn't mean their path is easy. The path is difficult, challenging, um, across the board. And every little goal, every little stream of success is an honorable space to be in. Because the time to get there is challenging notwithstanding who or what you are. It's really challenging. And so we honor that space to read this as, as two people who are privileged enough to take other people on this walk of um, health, wellness, whatever your goal may be. That's the beginning. Just to get healthy. Just to create and re-establish the wealth that your body can give out incredible honor and we go to the end of earth to get that process up and running and stable for everyone involved because we are living examples of how important it is to stay safe to stay well to be able to climb but the routine involved in that it's not a discipline as much as it's just do it. Yeah, it's a lifestyle. Yeah. It's no longer something that you do when you have a chance or you're going to put six weeks on this or eight weeks on this or dedicate yourself for two, three months. That's okay. That's good. But if you shift your mind and you become aware, there's no reason to up and down. The shit you're eating that makes you sick and fat and unhealthy that's not going to change. They're not going to make that better for you. So chances are they forever going to be bad for you. And I was one of those people. You go hard into a show, you look good, just to fucking step on stage and eat all the muffins and the donuts and the pizzas and the coke I can find. Just to lose all that and to feel sick and to go to the doctor because now I have a spastic colon because I ate too much gluten and I had too much dairy. And it's just, a, it's a fucking disaster. You have to start from scratch. I have to heal my insides now. I lose most of my, my gains and my progress because I have to revert back. This year I got another one of those. I health scare. May I ate, this was far off, like I was in the way of season. And we had some pizza, and it was like this, before we get started with the season, I'm going to do one more splurge, and then I'm clean, and then I'm done. We had some pizza, in the bowl you get these uh, Dunkin' Donuts, crispy cream, those bad boys. So I got myself four, it wasn't even splurging, I was like, I'm going to keep it civilized. Like the second one, my stomach said. Try another one. Come on, I saw you bought four. I dare you to eat another one. And after the two, I went to hospital. I had to get medication. Colon locked up completely. I, was, I went into a complete drench of wet. So fever, body is shutting down, severe pain, I didn't sleep. So I had to go get pills, vascopan, and acids, because now the body is breaking acid reflux to try and burn through the gluten but my system can't break gluten down so it's just burning my insides fucking smotherines 
not breaking down the food. So needless to say, when we came off, essays, we didn't even eat. So rice cake, it was rice, lentils, greens. That's it. I didn't even look at it go. Don't look at me. Because you need to learn after a while. It's no good. As much as it's nice and as much as you crave it, is it conducive? Is this positive? Is it going to put you further ahead or further back? I don't want to go back. I never want to go back. The aim is forward, progression, way better. Not, uh, 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 uh. It's dumb. I understand that this is bad. It's not good. And it is not, it's not just not good, it's negative. It really sets me back, puts me in a, space, a lesser space. I'm weak, my joints hurt. I can't eat, I have no, no, no hunger, no appetite. It's completely shut down. It doesn't want to respond. So there's no going back for me after this. It's simply, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's dumb to go back. There's nothing there. As much as people are praised and that pattern is ingrained, cereals and chocolates and chips, and you work hard and you need a reward. Bullshit. Absolute bullshit. Let's cut. We tell ourselves, we need this pie because I've worked so fuck the pie. The pie has done nothing for you. And when you try to get in shape, why don't you eat the pie? Because it's not working. So it never works. Not if you want results, not if you want to be healthy, not if you want to get lean and build muscle. There's more optimal ways to feed your progress, to get to your goals. So the marketing, I can blame for many people's demise, is because it's everywhere. It's convenient. We don't have time in our lives. Everything is a rush. That's why you have to prep your food. We have the same rush. And if we don't have food, guess what? We run to the cafe, we buy any shit we can find. So, to avoid that, have your shit prepared. Make your food, take care of yourself, love yourself enough to give yourself time. Make your food, make your food nice. Appreciate yourself to take care of yourself. You know, when you love someone and you make them a meal, they come over, you take real good care in preparing that meal. You go beyond. Cut it nice, spice it nice, decorate it nice. You should be doing that for yourself as well. But how many of you guys, when you're not catering for someone or there's no significant other, it's just you, take a chicken breast, fuck it in the microwave, some greens, put it in, ah, oh, there we go. Meal six done. That was not fun, that was not enjoyable. Your body's like, what the fuck is this? I thought I did a good job today. I worked my ass off. What is this? So tomorrow, guess what? You feed me like this again and you treat me like this again. I'm not gonna i I'm not gonna help you. And it's it's like that. So really be conscious of how you treat yourself. Speak to yourself, take care of yourself, eat. For me, I I really need to be at peace when I eat. I don't like to be rushed. I don't like people walking in on me and I, when I'm eating or hanging about me. Bro, what's, what's that? What's that? What are you eating? What's that? I, I, I fucking can't stand it. So make a space for yourself where you are at peace. And then you can enjoy your food and take time to process what you are doing. Be grateful for the food coming in. And everybody's like, oh, it's a cocky diet. Let me, let, me, let me explain something to you, for those of you who will find it very difficult to die, so difficult, blah, so bland. You get the opportunity to eat six balanced nutritional meals every day. There's people that don't find half a fucking meal in a day, if half. So don't be complaining about six proper meals that fuel your performance. You're not suffering, you're spoiled. There's people with nothing. We complain we need to drink so much water. I have to drink five to 10 liters today. There's people that need to walk 10, 15 kilometers to get a liter of water to survive today. It's not to fucking drink. It's to make food, it's to wash, it's to survive. There is no complaint. 
you've seen this shirt's first month said, pain is a privilege. You'll understand that when you get to a space like this, that even the hardships is a gift. I am fortunate to get this challenge and to have the resources to embrace it. I can eat six meals, I have money, I can buy food, I can rest, I have a job, I'm stable. It's much, much more to be positive about and grateful for them. Oh, complaining, oh, the diet's so hard, what the fuck is hard about it? But speak to one of those people and find out what's hard. When your kids is dying because there's no food, you shut the fuck up, you have six meals a day. So I guess what you want to say is nurture the nourishment. Make sure that that space is virtual. Prepare it with knowledge and insights. Eat it with the same care and love that you expect from a gifted meal. And then encourage the body to utilize it in a way that is most beneficial. So what you do and what you eat should be of benefit to the body. It doesn't mean you never pop out, but it means genuinely nourishing the system. And it will be so grateful. All it needs is a few anchors to hold on to and to get the perception you can understand its needs and that you're, you're literally working with it. So often we're brought up in a society of reward and punishment and the system doesn't value that space at all. What it needs to know is we're following the path of intelligence to create an official openings for the world. You're actually working with the body, not just that. If you don't do that, then that's going to happen. If you don't sweat profusely in this training session, then you have a trainer. If you don't have extreme pain the next morning, then you have a trainer. It's not really the truth. Not at all. No, there are times for that. Yeah, look, it's not about making your vessel suffer at all. And there's this huge concept in this three days where we have to suffer, you need to vomit, really feel like shit, and then you work. Well, I got problems with that, and I got the news for you. That is not the way to go. That is the worst response you can possibly get. Taking your system into overdrive for no reason, this is day one, let's go. You're just putting yourself back, you're just putting a shock into the connection. Remember, Muscle memory is not just a positive thing. If you fuck yourself up, it's going to remember that. So every time you get close to that border, it's going to go the same way. So Kate used to do long distance running. And she stops eating to get really light. Not stop eating, but the diet is altered so you can get light on your feet so you can run easier. And there's a certain weight, body weight, when she, when she reaches it, she gets sick. Every time. Now, that's, this was, say, 20 years ago. Today, if I take her body to the same way, she has the exact same response. Exactly. The body the doesn't know we are now gymming and she's no longer running. It only sees the fear, the connection, the muscle memory of once what was. And it triggers the same response. There's a file connected to that feeling. Now, you get the feeling, open the file, there you have a shutdown. She's going to do this again. This is where she runs with no food for fucking days and we're not having it. So we're not doing it. Immediately gets flu, um, some type of uh, respiratory infection. Shutdown, you're not running anymore. And it does it time and time again. No matter if it's summer, winter, whenever she goes to that level, the system shuts down. So please understand, there is a memory to bad as well. So if you're not enjoying something, or something is hurting you, it's going to stay there. So whatever you do, you need to do it in a positive setting and enjoy what you're doing. It's so much easier if you have fun. And I know it's a cliche, have fun. But really understand that there's a negative connection if you don't. So every time you walk in the gym and it's not nice, oh fuck, it's stuck again. You're not going to get the results because your system is in a negative space. You do not respond the same way when you're negative as when you're positive. 
We don't even vibrate the same. People don't want you in this space because you're not vibrating the same. This person comes to work, this one moans all the time. This one gets no results, that's why she's moaning all the time. This one is positive and working hard and it seems like it's always just success. It's the mind. The body is simple, uh, it's, it's, it follows the mind. So change your mind and the body will follow. This is not torture. Don't come here to punish yourself. That's not that. It's not this at all. You come here to reward your body with exercise and knowledge to better. You don't take your car to the garage to have the mechanic fuck it up and then you drive off. You take your car because there's a problem and you want it better. You want it to perform better. Fix the problems. It's a as much as it's expensive and it's a painful fucking procedure to do, you're safe, you feel comfortable, you're confident and you're happy with your car being serviced because you can trust it again. You know it's cool. The body is exactly the same. So as it starts to mistrust you, like in my circumstance, if I take it and you can mentally override every single physical aspect of your body all the time, or you can wake up to the core of any assistance here and you can't do that, I will shout you down, I will make you stop if you don't listen. Be the core, counterbalance it slightly, it will take you deep, it will take you deeper than that point of no return that you experience all the time. However, you need to be the core of the care. So as Sean says, feed the body. Come in to your space, knowing that this 45 minutes an hour of training is going to be really beneficial to you and expose yourself to the sensation of gratitude in that space. Like I said, about the food and nutrition. I'm so grateful to be able to work on my system and better the space that I'm in. I have full understanding. That is going to take a while, and that's part of the test. Part of the test, even for me, 25 years down the line, is are you going to destroy me? Because if you are, you're stopping the bus here. And it does. <laughs> you will slowly down, more and more and more, you become highly agitated in the space, negative, and nothing works. And truthfully, nothing works because you set the body up for a hardship, a death, a non reward, a punishment. And it's a capsule of positivity. So take those lines out of positivity and you're left with a sick, diseased body, which many of us walk around with, but there's a way out. There really is. Come into yourself, knowing that this is going to take days or two months. It isn't really a program, it's very short term to heal the body if you're after a sustainable health. And that's where she is now. That's a big thing people need to understand when you embark on a new fitness journey. It's not, I'm going to walk in and I'm going to start losing weight and I'm going to start burning fat and what I have six pack. The people that work with you, if they work their money, they need to identify why you're in this space, what is the problem, what is keeping you here, what loves you here, and start getting that out of your way. So as much as we're working with bodies, 90% of it is working with the mind. Telling people like, no matter how hard you work here, it's what you do when I don't watch you. When you leave here, what are you putting in your mouth? How much rest are you getting? Do you really need that chocolate? Do you really need the milkshake? No. So try and figure out what you want and then figure out what you don't need in terms of the food and the stuff that you're putting in. Because I'm guaranteeing you, you know where you're doing wrong. But then you justify why it's needed. Why I need this glass of wine tonight? Because fuck, it was such a hard day. Every day is hard. You can't, you can't keep giving that excuse. It was a hard day, so I'm having a glass of wine. Because guess what? Tomorrow's going to be another hard day. Because of that glass of wine. And tomorrow night you do the same. So you're making the day hard by doing the pattern you're doing. 
And if, if you guys can realize that, it is small changes that make massive differences. I'm not saying stop drinking completely. I'm saying the small ones you don't see because it's so regular, start becoming aware of it. If you're drinking a glass of wine every night, it's not a lot, but it's every night. So you are really, in terms of that patterning, an alcoholic. Yes, you don't have a problem, you're not falling around and gambling and talking about all the money. But it's an established pattern that you can't do without. And now you're spiking insulin, it's negative, it's alcohol, your sugar, your liver. So you're just setting everything up for failure. You, 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 the, pro the progress you've had so far is immediately stopped in the village by what you're doing now. And now this is just before you go to bed. And now you're lying with this catabolic thing running through your system. Because it can't be good if you're doing it every day. And you are now addicted to it. You can't do it without this every day. But it is a true crutch. Whether it is alcohol, chocolate, or fudge, or chips, or whatever it is that you lean towards. Again, don't criticize for your, yourself for that space. Just understand there's a need. You're, you're requiring something. And that's the possibility that can change your life. So come back all the way to the morning and start becoming fulfilled with what you do. So, for instance, if you get up, disciplinarians will say, if you make your bed, you want to move out of the big door until the bed is made. We will say, nourish your space, clean it up, make your bed, because you want to fulfill, sign and seal off that part of the day. The best part of that day has now been contained into this capture of positive spaces, and then you move up to the next. So that by the time you get to three or four or five o'clock, you don't have a whole lot of empty bubbles. But each one has this rainbow silver coloring around it. And then things start to work out very differently simply because you've nourished each and every available opportunity. It doesn't become easy, it's practice. Hello, peoples. That's 45 minutes. And it is 4.30 now. So it's about time to start getting ready. First plans will be here soon. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, subscribe, comments in the in the comments. What you want to see next? What you want us to talk about? Please follow us on Instagram at uh, Science Flexion Studio and at Johanna Tia and at Emily Kate Slaber on Instagram. We are busy with. Uh, like a project to get the money, the funding that we need to get to Spain. And the project goes like, we need a thousand people to simply give 100 Rand each. If we can get a thousand people to donate 100 Rand each, we are going to Spain. We'll be so grateful. Yes, it's, and it's truly needed. It's a, it's, it's a fuckload of money. I'm not going to joke with you. And there is no subsidies from, from our country or national sports committee or whatever. So we have to do this and fund ourselves to get to Spain. So we are reaching out to everybody that is fans, enthusiasts, um, bodybuilding lovers, people that just like sport, people that are fans of us, friends, family. Please donate a hundred, share the message with friends so they can just get your friends to really get into this project and ask your friends and family members. Everyone just give a hundred. And we, if we get a thousand people to do that, we are going to Spain. So please guys, support us, get behind us. We want to do good. We want to celebrate with you guys. We want to do this. This is what we do. So now we're reaching out because we simply can't come up with that amount of money. In, um, in euros, it's 6,000 euros. In South African Rand, it's 95, it's 100,000. And that's, there is no luxury, there's no holiday. That's not even enough. We still need to pay the flight then from Cape Town to Joburg to actually meet up with the team. That's, we need to get there to actually get to the team. That's extra. 
We haven't played the stands yet. That's not in that in that total that we're looking for. That's 2,000 rand each. It's 100 dollars or 100 euros per tan. And then the visas, which is also 2,000 per person. That's another four grand that we need to come up with just the visas. So as you can see, it's a lot of money. I think the hotel stay because it's a long, it's a, it's a big competition. It's over six days. It's a week. The hotel stay is 15,000. The flights is 22,000 each. This is all each. So all those totals is doubled. So it's 22,500 for the flights. That's 45, 46 grand just for the flights. And then 14, luckily we're staying together. So it's just 15 grand for the, for the stay. But that's the 45 plus the 15. Now we add 65, 70. So you see how quickly it goes. We need to pay for our uniforms, the traveling kit, the blazers, um, the ground travel, travel insurance. Yeah, there's a lot of money. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of stuff to cover. So please get behind us, back us. Like I said, you don't have to go broke to help us. We need 100 from 1,000 people and we are going to Spain. So no one needs to suffer for us. We'll do the suffering. We just need your support. 1,000 people, 100 bucks. And it's Spain, baby. It's Spain. <clears throat> Thank you guys for watching. We'll give you more details on that. I'll have a proper breakdown in the next video. And actually have a propaganda going to get us to Spain. But for now, that's a quick mention. That's what we're busy with. We're trying to get the funding to get to Spain. And then all the footage and videos and photos and uh, information we're going to gather when we're in Spain. Filming there, doing workouts there, showing you the show, what this is actually about for people, future athletes that wanting to do this, couples, so you can see what it's about and what you need to bring, what your A-game should be. So yeah, there's a lot to look forward to. And then I hope this worked. It was difficult to sync it with the software. So I hope it took. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow morning. In the meantime, stay on it.